Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for participating in Synergia's uh, webinar series. Uh, Synergia is a community-based organization uh, that serves the needs of parents of uh, children and youth with disabilities. Uh, I am Godfrey Rivera. I am part of the Metropolitan Parent Center at Synergia, and I'll be uh, collaborating with my colleagues, uh, uh, Ms. Miriam Morales, and Doris Rodriguez, who are also members of the Parent Center. Uh, today, we will be addressing a very important uh, component of special education. We're going to be just giving, uh, giving you a, a description and some of the, um, uh, the important points about the IEP. The IEP is, your, is the student's individualized education program that is designed to meet the needs of that child so he or she can have a beneficial learning experience at school. Uh, what we'll be doing is uh, the way we have the presentation set up, there's a number of slides that you'll be uh, viewing. The, uh, the first slide will always be in English, and uh, my colleague Miriam will be reading the information on that slide to make sure you have understanding. The subsequent slide will have the same information in Spanish, and I will read that information to Spanish-speaking parents. And uh, what we'd like to do, we'd like to go through the entire demonstration, the, the entire presentation. And uh, if you have any questions uh, uh, about any other content, please feel free to record it in the, in the chat box that you find at the bottom of the of your screen. Uh, okay, now I'm going to relay that same information to our parents who speak Spanish, and then we'll start the program. Hola, bienvenido a todos mundos a la agencia Sinergia. Somos una organización comunitaria localizada en Nueva York y estamos aquí para apoyar familias que tienen niños y jóvenes con discapacidades. Yo soy Goffi Rivera y soy miembro del Centro de Padres de Sinergia, el Centro Metropolitano de Padres. Y voy a hacer este, este webinar con mis colegas, uh, Miriam uh, Morales y Doris Rodríguez, que son miembros del Centro de Padres. Lo que voy a hacer es. Voy a leer la información que va a aparecer en la pantalla. Lo vamos a hacer una forma bilingüe. La primera uh, uh, la pantalla va a estar en inglés y después la siguiente, la, la siguiente va a tener la misma información en español y yo se la leerán. So vamos a comenzar uh, con el tema de hoy acerca del IT. Espero que encuentren una sesión beneficiosa. Gracias. Ok, um, I'm just going to start off here by ask, asking my colleague, Ms. Morales, to uh, commence the webinar by uh, addressing the information on the screen. Ms. Morales. Thank you, Godfrey. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, I will begin. Uh, the IEP Facts and Myths. This presentation is uh, about the IEP Facts and Myths. El IEP Hechos y Mitos. The objective of, of this workshop is to provide you with information about how to prepare for an IEP meeting. Be an informed and active participant at the IEP meeting and monitor your child's progress after an IEP is implemented. El objetivo de este taller es proporcionarle información sobre cómo, punto uno, prepararse para una reunión del IEP, segundo punto, Sea un participante informado y activo en la, reunión, en la reunión del IP. Y tercero, para monitorear el progreso de su hijo después de que se implemente el IP. The IP or Individualized Education Program is a written document that developed that's developed for each public school child who's, who is eligible for a special education. The IEP is a plan to address your child's need so that he or she can participate in school curriculum. The child's needs may include academic, cognitive, behavioral, physical, emotional, social, and communicative and functional life skills. 
El IP, uh, la pregunta es, ¿qué es un IP? La respuesta es, el IP o Programa de Educación Individualizado es un documento escrito que se desarrolla para cada niño de la escuela pública que es elegible para la educación especial. El IP es un plan para atender las necesidades de su hijo para que él o ella puedan participar en el plan de estudios de la escuela. Las necesidades del niño pueden incluir habilidades académicas, cognitivas, conductuales, físicas, emocionales, sociales, comunicativas y funcionales de la vida. The IEP is an educational and legally binding contract that describes and documents the personnel, services, and obligations necessary for providing the special, specially designed instructions for a student with a disability. The IEP is based on your child's academic, social, and behavioral unique needs. That is why it's called Individualized Education Plan. El IEP es un contrato educativo y legalmente vinculante que describe y documenta el personal, los servicios y las obligaciones necesarias para proporcionar la instrucción especialmente diseñada para un estudiante con una discapacidad. El IP se basa en las necesidades académicas, sociales y de comportamientos únicos de su hijo o hija. Es porque, y esa es la razón por que se llama un plan de educación individualizado. Tengo que darle más énfasis, este punto es muy importante. Este documento está estructura, estructurado exclusivamente para su hijo o hija. Este documento no se puede copiar y compartir con otros estudiantes, porque el punto es que es un programa individualizado para él o ella. Muy importante que usted sepa esto, que este plan está diseñado para funcionar para su hijo o hija. What I just shared with the uh, uh, parents here is that the IP uh, is very, is, you should know that it's a, a program that's designed exclusively for your child. No one else can participate in this plan. It's designed to meet his or her own uh, specific needs. So please be aware that the IP is, is um, just designed for your child and it's also a legal document. That is, the school is uh, held accountable to fulfill what the IEP is asking for. Who are the people who must be present at the initial IEP meeting? Parents, regular education teacher, special education teacher, a district representative, a person who can interpret evaluation results, school psychologist, school social worker, other with knowledge or expertise, child only when appropriate, and an individual qualified to provide or supervise special education services and understands the general education curriculum and the school district's resources. Uh, please note that when you look at the bullet that says a person who can interpret evaluation results, that is, that is a, that refers to the school psychologist. But the reason why there's a little asterisk there is because in New York City, we have seen that the Department of Education has also um, empowered other people besides the school psychologist to be uh, involved with this process. Uh, otherwise, they still have to be aware of what the resources that the, that the district has available to fulfill the needs of students with, uh, with uh, disabilities. And the last point about a child when appropriate, yes, if a parent is an effective advocate, he or she is, asked, is also helping her child learn what his or her rights are and to be able to advocate for himself or herself. So if you understand that your child can understand and handle these, uh, these concerns, definitely he or she should be a member of the IEP team when he becomes old enough to be able to do so. In New York State, that's usually around um, uh, 14 to 15 years old. 
if that child can participate in the meeting. Let me just relay the information in Spanish. ¿Quiénes son las personas que deben estar presentes en la reunión inicial del IEP? Los padres, por supuesto, la maestra de educación regular, a la maestra de educación especial, un representante de distrito, usted ve la, la estrella ahí, esta es una persona que está calificada para proporcionar o supervisar los servicios de educación especial y entiende la, el plan de estudios de educación general y tiene conocimiento de los recursos disponibles de los, del distrito para apoyar al niño. So eso es lo que es la persona que puede interpretar, usualmente el psicólogo escolar. La trabajadora o trabajador social también es parte del equipo. Otras personas con conocimiento o experiencia, por supuesto, si usted trabaja y su hijo está bajo el cuidado de una vecina, un miembro de familia, esa persona también puede estar invitada a la reunión de IP. Y cuando sea apropiado, su hijo o hija también debe de participar en esta conversación y este equipo, porque él o ella, esa persona, de que se trata el plan de educación especial. Um, Part one, how to prepare for an IEP meeting. Parents, make sure you are able to describe your child's disability to the other members of the IEP team. Understand how your child's disability affects his or her ability to learn and function in the classroom. Write down your child's strengths, needs, and interests. Think about and write down your major concerns about his or her education. Yes, I need to reemphasize the importance of parents being able to have an understanding of their child's disability. It is really important that when you go to an IP meeting, you're able to uh, listen to and understand the information that is being conveyed uh, throughout the, in the members there. Because the point is, if you don't have an understanding of how your, IP, of your child's disability affects the way he or she learns and functions, you may not be able to, uh, to uh, um, benefit from the information that's being shared. So we always suggest to parents that attend workshops, uh, visit uh, resources on the on the internet so they have an understanding of how to make this possible. Um, it's also important that you just not only address your child's needs and you know and uh, issues, but you also talk about your child's strengths, what they are good at, what they like to do. It's really important for the IEP team to hear this information too. Okay, let me just do that in Spanish. Falte una. Uh, ¿Cómo prepararse para la reunión del IEP? Asegúrese de poder describir la discapacidad de su hijo a los demás miembros del equipo de la IP. Este punto es sumamente importante. No tiene que ser un profesional, pero porque usted cría a su hijo o hija, tiene conocimiento de cómo él o ella funciona, qué son las necesidades, uh, las fortalezas que él o ella tiene, y va a tener que poder compartir esta información con el, el equipo de la IP. Segundo punto. Es bueno tener entendimiento de cómo la discapacidad de su hijo afecta su capacidad para aprender y funcionar en el salón de clase. Otro punto muy importante. Uh, si usted tiene entendimiento de estos puntos, otra vez, la información que va a compartir va a tener más, uh, más uh, uh, entendimiento para el resto del equipo. Tercer punto. Escriba no solamente las necesidades de su hijo, pero también las fortalezas. ¿Qué le llama la atención a, a ella o él? ¿Qué son las pasiones del hijo? ¿Qué le gusta hacer? El equipo también tiene que escuchar acerca de la información de cómo, de qué anima su hijo o hija. Uh, cuarto punto, piense y anote sus principales preocupaciones acerca de la educación y otros aspectos uh, de la experiencia escolar de su hijo. Parents, make sure to bring copies of current and past IEPs to the meeting. Gather information about your child that will be helpful. School reports, your observations, evaluations, etc. Write down questions that you have for the IEP team. 
as well as goals and priorities that you have for your child. Bring someone along with you for support and to help you stay on task. All right, let me just um, elaborate on that a little bit. Uh, four points first. Many parents attend meetings uh, thinking that they are prepared to uh, understand and participate simultaneously. That's really not the case. Um, you're sitting in a room full of other people who are uh, who have specific expertise to share with you. Um, and we always recommend to parents that when someone is talking about your child's needs or um, some therapy or program that will benefit him or her, you need to pay attention 100% of the time. So that's why we recommend that you always bring someone along with you to support you and also to help you stay on task and to write down information that's being discussed. Uh, the IEP meeting is not a good arena or place to practice multitasking. You need to give your attention 100% of the time. Prepare yourself. Write down questions and other inquiries that you have before you go to the meeting. Practice reading them with the person that you invited to come along with you. Um, bring copies of current and past IEPs to the meetings. It's really important that we look to see if uh, specific goals have been addressed and met. And gather information about your child that will be helpful. Report cards, ev observations, evaluations, uh, uh, comments from teachers, etc. Cuando antes de asistir la reunión del IP, asegúrese de llevar copias del IP actual que tiene que está usando en el momento y también del IP del pasado a la reunión. Reúna información sobre su hijo que le será útil, informes escolares, sus observaciones, evaluaciones, etc. Uh, a la derecha. Escriba lo, las preguntas que tenga para el equipo del IP, así como las metas y prioridades que tiene para su hijo o hija. Cuarto punto. Traiga, traiga a alguien con usted para obtener apoyo y para ayudarle a mantenerse en la tarea o enfocada en lo que se está hablando. Otra vez, es sumamente importante que usted dedique 100% de su atención a todo lo que se está discutiendo acerca de su hijo o hija. No sería buena idea a usted tratar de escuchar y escribir lo que se está discutiendo a la misma vez. Por eso que invito a alguien, un amigo, una colega, un miembro de familia que la podrá ayudar porque ella va a estar responsable para tomar las notas que se está discutiendo. Um, es buena idea a tener una lista de preguntas antes que, está, que esté en la reunión. Escriba todo lo que se, todas sus preocupaciones uh, en un papel, en un cuaderno, y llévese ese cuaderno a la reunión. Uh, llévese las copias del IP corriente de, la, de él o ella y del, del año pasado y del año antepasado. Es buena idea uh, mantener eh, una serie de observaciones de, de estos documentos. Uh, también uh, coleccione su información de, de los padres. Informes de las maestras que usted recibe, uh, observaciones, evaluaciones, etc. Uh, preparación es clave para que tenga una experiencia beneficiosa en la reunión del IT. Here are some ideas to consider when you're preparing for the IEP meeting. Enter the meeting room prepared to work. You have your documents, a pad with your written questions, and your partner. You are rested and mentally ready to discuss your issues and concerns. There is a great deal of information that you will hear and discuss, and it could be overwhelming. It's a good idea for you, for your partner, to take notes of what is being said. If you are an English language learner, you have the right to have an interpreter at the IEP meeting. Also, you have the right to receive documents that have been translated into your language. Thank you, Miriam. Algunas, uh, estas son algunas ideas que debe tener en cuenta cuando se está preparando para la reunión del IEP. 
a la primera caja a la izquierda, entre a la sala de las reuniones preparada para trabajar. Tiene sus documentaciones, documentos, una, una tarjeta con sus preguntas escrita y también tiene el apoyo de su pareja de, que, lo, que la está acompañando. Usted debe de estar descansada y mentalmente preparada para discutir sus problemas y preocupación. Otra vez, el enfoque a lo que se está discutiendo es clave en esta reunión. Caja en el medio. Hay una gran cantidad de información que escuchará y discutirá acerca de su hijo o hija. Y puede ser demasiado abrumador, bien difícil mantenerse conectada con la información. Es una buena idea de que su pareja tome notas, como yo mencioné eh, recientemente, de lo que se está diciendo. Acá a la, a la derecha, si usted uh, está aprendiendo el inglés, o sea, si usted no entiende o habla el inglés, tiene el derecho de tener un intérprete en la reunión de la IP. También tiene el derecho a recibir sus doc documentos que hayan sido traducidos a su idioma, en este caso español. Dejaré enfatizar, tiene el derecho de tener un intérprete en la reunión. El intérprete debe tener conocimiento de los temas de educación especial y idealmente del proceso de la IP. Uh, también uh, uh, debe, lo, puede pedir todos los archivos, las evaluaciones, hasta el IP traducido a su idioma. Es muy difícil entender la información si usted no lo puede leer. Su derecho bajo la ley es pedir que se traduzcan esta, esta documentación. Uh, briefly, what I said here, um, uh, when you are preparing to go to an IP meeting, you gotta make sure you get a really good night's rest and sleep before the meeting. Uh, it's really gonna be very hard to keep track if you, ha if you haven't slept well or you're not feeling well. Uh, When you go into that room, enter prepared to work. You have your pad with all the questions that you want to discuss, and you have your your uh, partner there to help you make sure you stay on on, on track. Um, there's going to be a lot of information that's going to be discussed. It could be very overwhelming. So uh, once again, have someone there to write whatever is being discussed that you consider is important while you listen to the conversation. If you distract yourself by writing, you may miss some important points. And finally, on this page, um, uh, parents who do not have an understanding or ability to speak English have a right to request an interpreter at the meeting. An interpreter who has an understanding of special education uh, policies and procedures, and hopefully of the IEP process. Um, uh, also, they have a right to have these documents interpreted into their Uh, formal native language. Part two, during the IEP meeting. It's important <clears throat> to establish at the beginning of the meeting that everyone knows that the meeting is about a real child, your child. Humanize the meeting by passing around a picture of your child um, or sharing, you know, stories of, of, you know, things that he has been achieving. At this At, at the IEP meeting, you will discuss information about your child that will be used to design the IEP. You will have with opportunities to ask questions, suggest ideas, goals, share important insights about your child. Remember, you are the expert because you know your child better than anyone else. Note, you must be given five days notice before attending the IEP meeting. So that would be at least five business days. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's really important that you realize that under uh, uh, the law, it's called the Individuals with Disabilities Education Act, or IDEA. That law clearly states that parents must be given five school days notice before attending an IEP meeting. So you can collect your documents, uh, find someone that will uh, accompany you, et cetera. That's really important. Uh, something else that, uh, that um, uh, Miriam said is really important that uh, somehow a lot of the parents that some, sometimes go to means feel that they don't really have a role 
or reason to be there because what am I gonna do with these experts? Well, you know, but they kind of forget that you know your child better than I do. You will always know your child better than people who just work with your child. So you need to believe that you have really important information to share about your child, not just needs, but like uh, Miriam mentioned, what makes him or her smile? What makes him or her dance? What makes him or her happy? We have to hear that information too. Your child is a composite of different things, not just uh, problems and needs, but things that make him happy. So please believe and understand you're an expert on your child and you're working with a group of people that are experts on resources, uh, um, placements, etc. As a team, we will be able to put together a really good IEP program for your child. Um, and the thing about humanizing a child, when I do these workshops and I'm talking about this theme, this is what I do. I ask parents to, that are at the workshop to pull out or show me on their cell phone a picture of their child. And I pick up a phone and I pass it around the room, a few of them. And this is the reaction I always get. The parent who's looking at the picture always smiles or laughs or say something, oh, how cute, something really good. We need to know, and the team needs to know that we're talking about a human being, a really special human being that's my child. Let's keep that in mind because you have to realize uh, the members of the IP team do many, many uh, IP meetings, and sometimes uh, they get lost in the documentation and all those other things, and we need to make it uh, for them to understand that we're talking about a very special human being, my child. Thank you. Okay, la segunda parte se encarga de su, uh, lo que usted debe hacer durante la reunión de la IP. Uh, es importante establecer al principio de la reunión que todo el mundo uh, sepa que la reunión se trata de un niño real, su hijo o hija. Debe de humanizar la reunión pasando alrededor un foto, una imagen de su hijo o hija. Lo que yo le expliqué en, español, en inglés es, cuando usted hace esto, todo el mundo va a tener que realizar que no solamente estamos discutiendo documentación, evaluaciones, etcétera, Estamos hablando de, de un ser humano muy especial, mi hijo o mi hija. Cuando usted pase esa foto alrededor, alrededor del, del equipo de la IP, van a realizar que su hijo o hija es alguien especial porque van a estar sonriendo o diciendo un comentario bien lindo acerca de su hijo. En el medio, en la reunión del IP, usted discutirá información sobre su hijo que se utilizará para diseñar el IP. Usted tendrá oportunidades de hacer preguntas, sugerir ideas, metas, compartir, compartir ideas importantes sobre su hijo. Recuerde que usted es el experto o experta porque usted conoce a su hijo mejor que nadie. Por favor, crea ese punto, es muy importante. No se siente que yo aquí en esta reunión hablando con estos expertos. Usted conoce a su hijo mejor que ellos. Siempre, por favor, de, hágalo todo lo posible para describir sus hijos, no solamente las necesidades, pero las fortalezas de él o ella. ¿Qué lo anima? ¿Qué lo hace sentir? alegre y contento, muy importante. Y al, al fondo, debe de notar que su, se le debe dar cinco días de anticipación escolar antes de asistir a la reunión de, de la IP. Esto, es, uh, esto es, uh, funciona en la ciudad de Nueva York por ley. Cuando usted está invitada a la, una reunión uh, por escrito, la escuela le debe dar, le tiene que dar cinco días para preparar para la reunión, para usted conocer su documentación, invitar a una persona que podrá asistir con usted y cosas así. Si entra a la reunión uh, no preparada, eso va a tener no muy buenas consecuencias para su hijo o hija. Okay, muy bien. The idea states that these factors must be included in the IEP. A report on the child's present level of education performance, uh, also known as PLOP, 
learning characteristics, social physical de development, management needs, a classification of the child's disability, measurable annual goals, including academic functional goals, program recommendations and or related services and how the child's disability have affects his or her involvement and progress in the general curriculum. Okay. Okay, thanks a lot, Miriam. There was a little bit of audio distortion there, so let me go through this again. Hello? Um, can you hear me? Uh, hello? Uh, oh, the IEP must include yeah. these factors. Sorry about that. No problem. Uh, so the IEP must include these factors according to the IDEA law that I mentioned. Uh, and this is usually found in the first part of the IEP where you will see a report from all the teachers and related service personnel that work with each child um, that discuss your child's present level of performance, or they call that PLOP, PLOP. Basically, that means where is your child functioning right now in, in, in uh, academic areas like writing, reading, mathematics, um, development of social skills, whatever the area of need was, the person who works with your child must report on that in the IEP meeting. Uh, that report also includes a statement about his or her learning characteristics. How does your child learn? Is he a visual learner, uh, uh, auditory learner, et cetera, et cetera. Also information about his or her social and physical development and management, and management needs if necessary. Your, your, your child must also be classified according to one of the 13 disability categories that were developed by the U.S. Department of Education. They prepared a list of 13 different categories of disability, and the team must identify one of those categories and indicate it in the report before we can start providing uh, educational services for him or her. The, uh, the, the uh, IEP must in also include measurable annual goals that include academic and functional goals. And by measurable goals, basically that means that can we as teachers, parents, et cetera, see the results of the goal? Uh, that means that uh, can that goal be visually observed or counted? Um, that's a whole workshop by itself and perhaps we will work on designing a webinar on this theme. Um, also, uh, Based upon the child's needs, uh, what are some of the recommendations for program placement and or related services? And also a statement about how your child's disability affects his or her involvement and progress in the general curriculum. People need to understand that there is, people, many people think that there are two curriculums existing in the school system, a general education curriculum and a special ed curriculum. That is not true. There's only one curriculum, which is a general ed curriculum. For children with, uh, with disabilities, they are entitled to receive modifications and other ways of addressing the information so they are able to learn uh, from going to school. La ley IDEA, la ley de educación para individuos con discapacidades, uh, establece que estos factores deben ser incluidos en el IP de su hijo o hija. Punto uno. Un informe sobre el nivel actual del niño de desempeño educativo. Lo que eso significa que los maestros, las personas que ofrecen servicios relacionados, tienen que escribir una declaración acerca de cómo su niño está funcionando en el momento en temas académicos, escritura, matemática, de, en temas, en temas de, eh, sociales, comunicativos, etcétera, de su hijo o hija. Esta información es muy importante para determinar. Tenemos que tener conocimiento de en qué nivel su hijo funciona en este momento para poder determinar 
que él o ella tiene que aprender para tener éxito al, para el fin del año. Muy importante. El IT también debe de, de tener metas anuales medibles que incluyen metas académicas y funcionales. Una meta anual medible significa que en orden para determinar si el niño tuvo éxito en cumplir con la meta, se puede observar o, o contar la, el resultado de esa meta. Eh, uh, estamos planificando una, un webinar acerca de ese punto que es muy importante. Uh, la, el punto cuatro, recomendaciones de programas y o servicios relacionados. Después que se terminan las necesidades, se tienen que determinar qué son los recursos, ubicaciones, servicios necesarios para que el niño o la niña beneficie de estar en la escuela y para que muestre progresos en los temas indicados en el IP. Punto cuatro, y también una declaración como la discapacidad del niño afecta la participación y progreso en el plan de estudios general. Mencioné al otro grupo de, de habla eh, inglés que el sistema, el sistema de educación no tiene, a mucha gente piensa que tienen dos componentes. Una parte que se dedica a educación general uh, y otra componente para niños que tienen discapacidades. Eso no es cierto. Simplemente existe un currículo, el, el currículo de educación general para niños con discapacidades se tienen que desarrollar estos planes de IP para, y ofrecerle um, uh, formas de él o ella poder atender uh, los temas y poder uh, beneficiar y demostrar progreso de los temas indicados en el IP. Types of IP review. There, there is an annual review. The goals and service plans of an IEP must be reviewed annually. People who contrib contribute to the reviews must include the special and regular education, teachers, school, a school representative, service providers, and a person with knowledge of the appropriate evaluation procedures of the parent and the parent. I'm sorry. The try Triennial uh, review is conducted every three years and must include a complete set of evaluations and assessment. Uh, now remember, that's different from the annual review. Once your child is initially uh, evaluated, he will get a triennial uh, review, which will be uh, will, which will consist of all new evaluations for an up updated diagnosis and classification. So it's conducted every three years and must include a complete set of evaluations and assessment used. There should be a clear record of the child's progress and difficulties under the current IEP plan. And there's also a requested review. Uh, an IEP review may be requested by the parent, teacher, or school administrator. And this is what we see a lot of times as school um, advocates, uh, education mm -hmm. advocates. Uh, a lot of times the parents do not agree with uh, the annual review and, and they feel that uh, the teacher is not addressing, uh, the school is not addressing the child's educational uh, needs. So they request, they can request uh, uh, a new review. Mm -hmm. That's correct. Thank you. That's very important information you shared, uh, Miriam. I just want to add uh, a couple of points here uh, about um, uh, the uh, triennial review. Triennial means it happens every three years. Every three years, your child will, will undergo a series of, of evaluations as if it was the first time. And uh, besides the reasons that uh, Miriam mentioned, there are other, two other very important ones. One reason why this is done is that we want to see if your child has been benefiting from the services provided via the IEP, if the related services have been uh, producing uh, measurable progress in your child. Uh, that's one really important reason for that. And the other reason is, uh, is that your child, who will, let's pretend that she is eight years old now. In three years, she's going to be 11 years old. Guess what? She's almost a teenager. And it's, for the parents that have teenagers uh, realize um, 
things are a little different when your child be, and enters uh, adolescence. So we need to understand how these issues will impact how your child learns, how he or she communicates, and how you know how to deal with behavior issues that may um, that may uh, occur at this age. So it's really important that the triennial review is conducted. And as Miriam said, if at any time you don't understand or you're not happy, like with the evaluation I just mentioned, you have a right to request another one. Parents can request what's called an individual, in, excuse me, individual educational evaluation, IEE, uh, in writing from the IEP team. Uh, then you will be supplied in New York City with a list of agencies that conduct these uh, evaluations. You call, arrange for uh, the evaluations, and then the district handles other issues, including uh, paying the agency uh, for these uh, services. So uh, just understand they have different types of IP. And uh, the other thing I wanted to mention is another reason why parents may ask for another IP meeting. Uh, let's assume that the parents move from one part of the city to another, and it's a, it's a brand new area, the child is very uncomfortable, starts to act out. At that point, you may want to request another IEP meeting to see what or what uh, resources this new school district may have available for your son or for your daughter. Um, aquí vamos a discutir brevemente los diferentes tipos de del IEP, de, de revisión del IEP. En primer lugar, hay la revisión anual. Uh, en esta reunión, las metas y el plan de servicio de un IP deben ser revisados anualmente. Las personas que van a contribuir a la revisión deben incluir los maestros de su hijo de educación especial y educación regular, una 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 representante escolar uh, que habla de los servicios y recursos disponibles para el niño, los pro, proveedores de servicios uh, um, como la eh, la persona que hace la terapia de habla o física, lo que sea, y una persona con conocimiento de los procedimientos de evaluación y el padre, usualmente el psicólogo escolar. Después tenemos la revisión trienal, trienal que significa que cada tres años se realiza una evaluación que debe incluir un conjunto completo de evaluaciones y, y uh, utilizadas. Debe haber un registro claro del progreso y dificultades del niño bajo el plan de la IP. La razón mayor para la revisión trianal, cada tres años se hace una serie de evaluaciones como si fueran por primera vez. La razón, hay muchas razones, pero las más importantes son para, tenemos que determinar si su, si su hijo ya ha beneficiado de los servicios indicados en el IP de los servicios de, de los servicios relacionados y intuición etcétera etcétera también niños crecen y cambian uh, el ejemplo que yo usé su hijo o hija de ocho años no va a ser la misma persona cuando cumple los once años so tenemos que tener todo eso en en, en cuenta cuando se discuten servicios um, y programas ubicaciones para él o ella que lo van a beneficiar. Y también la, el último punto significa que usted puede uh, uh, solicitar una revisión, una reunión de la IP cuando usted uh, tenga, sabe, cuando usted quiere pedir algo para resolver un, una, una situación. Por ejemplo, la familia se muda de una parte de la ciudad a otra el niño no está acostumbrado, no se, no se siente cómodo, está asustado, tal vez puede actuar de una forma uh, uh, notada, o so, se tiene que uh, pedir una reunión para ver cómo el, la escuela nueva le va a poder ayudar a dirigirse a los problemas de su hijo o hija. Finally, about the IEP. Before leaving the meeting, make sure you ask for and get a copy of your child's draft IEP. You should review it and decide if you agree with it, with what it says. If you don't agree with any part of the IEP, ask that it be changed, or if not, 
that your disagreement is included under the parent concern section of the IEP. Be sure to get a final copy of your child's IEP. Uh, yeah, we always uh, advise parents that at the end of the meeting to request uh, a draft because there's usually someone that's recording uh, the important elements of the conversation. So you should be able to ask uh, for that draft, especially if we're looking at services and support for your child. The reason why we recommend that is at some point uh, later on, you get a letter from the Department of Education and that kind of reviews uh, the outcomes of the IEP meeting. Uh, and then we tell parents to compare what that statement says to the draft that you took to make sure that they match, okay? So if you, if parents have a disagreement with the IEP, they should bring it up and discuss it. And if that, if that doesn't resolve in any uh, positive outcome, we ask them to note their disagreement in a section of the IEP that's called parent concern, parents concern. They, they have a right to indicate what their disagreement was in that part of the IEP. And also, at, uh, make sure that after your IEP has been processed by the district, that you get a final copy of the IEP. Really important that you have this document of, of, your, of this uh, IEP meeting. Okay, let me move on here. Okay, sobre el IEP, finalmente sobre el IEP. Antes de salir de la reunión del IEP, asegúrese de pedir y obtener una copia borrador del IEP de su hijo o hija. Usualmente hay una persona que está tomando notas de elementos de la conversación, especialmente cuando están hablando de los recursos, apoyos que se van a utilizar para apoyar a su hijo o hija. Usted debe de revisar ese documento, el borrador, y, y decidir si está usted en acuerdo con lo que dice. Uh, si no está en acuerdo con, uh, con algo en el IP de su hijo, con ninguna parte del IP, pida que se cambie, <coughs> o si no, que, se, que, se, que su desacuerdo esté incluido o grabado en la sesión que se dice preocupación de los padres del IP. Esta es una sesión del IP a donde usted puede uh, documentar sus uh, desacuerdos con el equipo IP. Y finalmente, asegúrese de obtener una copa, copia final del IP de su hijo o hija. Muy importante. Y otra vez, si no entiende o lee ese inglés, tiene el derecho de pedir que este documento esté traducido a su lenguaje Martelo, en este caso, español. Part three, after the IEP meeting, review the IEP throughout the year. Make sure yeah. that, it, that it is meeting the needs of your child. The IEP must be reviewed at least once a year to determine whether the annual goals have been achieved or to revise the IEP if necessary. Ensure that you are informed regularly by your child's teacher about his or her progress. Ask for their school email address. Communicate with your child's school regularly and get informed about whether your child is making progress towards meeting the goals or whether the progress is enough to reach the goals. If you have questions or, uh, con or concerns regarding the goals that have been established in the IEP, you may request an IEP meeting any time during the year. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so I'll just briefly, um, uh, uh, what we at the Parent Center uh, really believe is that uh, the parents and the teachers in the school are working as a team to ensure that the child receives an, uh, an appropriate and um, effective education for the child. So we really recommend that parents do, uh, do everything possible to stay in contact with the schools, with their child's teachers, and related service providers. As, as Miriam mentioned, you can request uh, their uh, email address from them. Every person that works in the New York City Department of Education has an email address assigned to them by the DOE. And we, Parents can make a request to have that emails in order to, you know, maintain a communication, ask uh, 
prog uh, ask the teacher or the related service person about the progress that their child has been making, or you're concerned that you're not seeing enough progress and you want to know what are the issues that are getting in the way, um, and that you know that you have um, an understanding and are willing to cooperate and work with the teachers and related service providers to make sure that your child benefits uh, uh, from this uh, education. Okay, um, parte 3, después de la reunión del IP, uh, revise el IP a lo largo del año. Asegúrese de que satisface las necesidades de su hijo. El IP debe ser re revisado por lo menos una vez al año para determinar si las metas anuales han sido alcanzadas y para revisar el IP si es necesario. Este punto es muy importante porque otra vez niños, inclusive niños que tienen discapacidad, van a la escuela para aprender y mejorar en su nivel de aprendizaje. Eso se llama progreso. Tenemos que tener información acerca de cómo la escuela intenta a, a hacer para que los niños progresen. So, usted tiene el derecho de comunicar con el personal escolar, inclusive los que le dan los servicios relacionados a su hijo o hija, para hacer preguntas, para compartir informa información nueva que tiene de su hijo o hija y para mantener comunicación para ello o ella. Segundo punto, asegúrese que los maestros de su hijo le informen regularmente acerca de su pro del progreso de su hijo o hija. Pida su dirección de correo electrónico escolar, como yo mencioné. Tercer punto, comuníquese con las escuelas de su hijo regularmente y obtenga información acerca de si su hijo está progresando hacia la, el cumplimiento de las metas de la IP y si el progreso es suficiente para alcanzar las metas. Si usted tiene preocupación con respecto a las metas que se han establecido en el IP, Usted puede solicitar una reunión del IP en cualquier momento durante el año. Tenga conocimiento íntimo de las metas. Si no entienden la función de las metas, pregunte qué es la función de la meta o qué yo puedo hacer para ayudar que mi hijo o mi hija uh, logre la meta. Hay muchas formas que usted tiene disponible para trabajar uh, efectivamente con el equipo escolar. I just mentioned to the parents that it's really important that you have an understanding of the, of your child's goals as indicated on the IEP because if you have an understanding of the goals, you can have a determination of whether your child is benefiting from the goal or, as we say, is, is demonstrating progress. Um, by talking to the teachers and related service uh, personnel, you'll be able to get good information whether that, whether the goals on his or her IEP are being met. You should have a really clear understanding of the goals. If you don't ask what the goals are supposed to measure and how uh, the parent can help, uh, you know, continue the, uh, the goal at home, that would be a very good suggestion that we offer to parents too. What can the parent do to keep, or uh, you know, to re, uh, reinforce the goal at home. More um, things to do after the IEP meeting. Reinforce and continue the IEP at home. Ask your child's teacher and related service providers to provide you with tasks and activities that will help you reinforce IEP objectives. Set, start a binder or binders to store and keep track of important documents, evaluations, report cards, correspondence, forms, health and medical records, etc. Keep a calendar of important dates, deadlines, and meetings. You and the school can agree in writing to make change to your child's IEP at any time. Okay. Okay. Más cosas que, que, que hacer después de la reunión del IP. Reenfuerce y continúe el IP en su hogar, en su casa. Pida a los maestros de su hijo o hija 
que, uh, y los proveedores de servicios relacionados que le proporcione tareas y actividades que ayuden a reforzar los objetivos del IP en su hogar. Inicie una carpeta o carpetas para almacenar y realizar un seguimiento de documentos importantes, evaluaciones, tarjetas de informe, correspondencia, formularios, registros médicos y de salud. En la vida escolar de su hijo va a obtener uh, muchas, muchas uh, cartas, uh, correspondencias, etcétera, así que la educación y otras necesidades de Dios. Debe de organizarla en una carpeta uh, para que si, te, si, si un día va a tener que tener acceso a un documento, lo va a poder conseguir uh, fácilmente. Tercer punto, mantenga un calendario de fechas, plazos y reuniones importantes, muy importantes. Y cuarto punto, usted y la escuela pueden acordar por escrito hacer cambios en el IP de su hijo en cualquier momento durante el año escolar. Okay, so we added some information of uh, to re to kind of reflect what's going on now. Learn from home, uh, and this information we got from the New York uh, Department of Education website. Uh, students with individualized education programs (IEP). If you're If your student is recommended for integrated co-teaching, special class, or special education teacher support services, your child will your your child's school will make every effort to arrange for them continue to receive instructions from the same special education teachers and classroom para uh, professionals that usually teach them. Someone from your school will contact you to discuss how instructions will be delivered. Your child's IEP meeting will take place. Uh, IEP meeting will be conducted by phone to make sure to make a referral for initial evaluations or reevaluations. You can email your principal at or uh, special education at schools.nyc.gov or call 311. For more, uh, on remote learning for students with IEP, please visit schools.nyc.gov backslash learn at home. Uh, additional resources from New York City Department of Education. Um, they're also offering free meals. Uh, New York uh, City Department of Education will continue to offer free meals in the weeks ahead uh, at more than 400 sites across the city. Food hubs will operate Monday through Friday from 7.30 a.m. through 1.30 p.m. And any student of any age can get three meals daily. Visit schools.nyc.gov backslash free meals to find a site near you. Electronic devices. This is something else that uh, I wanted to add uh, on, in this presentation because it reflects what's going on now with children with special education, um, children with IEPs, electronic devices. If your child needs a device to participate in the remote learning, you will have, wait, and you have not filed a, uh, filled out a device request form, please visit coronavirus.schools.nyc backslash remote learning devices. Uh, we will help you get a device with the internet connections. Uh, so also, uh, I wanted to include information for uh, uh, turning five children that ha will be having IEPs or children who are entering uh, middle schools or high schools and you're, you're waiting for admission letters. So enrollment and placement support, family welcome center staff are available by email and are prepared to assist in, and in, uh, with enrollment and placement of new admissions. So I wanted to include this here because I felt it was very important for those parents uh, waiting for uh, placement support. Questions around, uh, around uh, admissions, information about offers and wait lists, they will assist you. So please get in contact with the Family uh, Welcome Center if you're still waiting uh, uh, to hear about placement and or if you need information about enrollment for September and your child has an IEP. 
I, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Miriam for putting together this, this information. It's so crucial uh, that parents, oh, yeah, we all understand that uh, coronavirus has turned everything upside down. Uh, and we understand now that if there's a parent that has a child with a uh, with special need, um, life is going to become very challenging now because he or she is not going to school. But uh, the Department of Education in New York City has made uh, some resources available for parents, and we're all going to have to become very familiar with what they call distance learning now, uh, because. That's a way that we may have to need uh, to access in order to continue to, to, to provide education and other resources for our children. So please take advantage of these resources. These are key for parents who have children in the New York City uh, education system. But for parents who are in other states, I recommend that you contact your Parent Information Training Center, P-T-I-C. Uh, uh, our Parent Center in New York City is uh, one of these parent training information centers. Every state in the union has at least one. Some have more than one. You can just Google it, uh, write PTIC and the name of your state, and you'll be able to uh, be connected to a, a center that can offer your resources. You can also try to contact the Department of Education in your particular state. And, uh, and see what kind of resources they have available to, uh, to serve the needs of children with, uh, with, with disabilities. So once again, thanks very much for putting this together, Miriam. Good information. Okay. Uh, okay, ahora todo el mundo sabe que el, este virus, uh, coronavirus, ha cambiado la vida de todo el mundo totalmente. Pero, o su hijo todavía tiene el derecho de recibir una educación. ¿Cómo se va a proporcionar? Es diferente ahora porque las escuelas están cerradas. Um, y, pero hay mucha, um, la información que está presentada en la pantalla ahora fue conocida por la uh, Miriam Morales y habla de muchas formas de usted tratar de conectar con las escuelas para asegurar a lo, a lo, que, en qué forma se pueden tratar la necesidad de su hijo. Debe saber que las personas que ofrecen servicios relacionales no están permitidas a entrar a su hogar. Uh, están, a están a tratando de usar algo que se llama, un tema nuevo que se llama uh, uh, aprendizaje a la distancia. Disculpe si eso no es la traducción correcta, pero básicamente vamos a tener que utilizar a, a la computadora, las tabletas, hasta el teléfono para poder apoyar a nuestros hijos. En esta pantalla aquí, ella puso algunos sitios web que usted puede conectar para ver cómo se puede apoyar a su hijo o hija. También eh, esta información de cómo, si vive en Nueva, Nueva York, cómo obtener comida uh, gratis, de dispositivos electrónicos. La Junta de Educación está proporcionando tabletas para familias en, uh, para tratar de uh, darle acceso a información para que su hijo o hija uh, podrá seguir su educación. So aquí está mucha información que usted puede uh, uh, leer uh, con, uh, a, a su forma y después um, la puede utilizar. También en Nueva York ten, tenemos una colección telefónica que es 311. Usted la marca, uh, también la, la pueden recibir, eh, tiene personas que hablan español uh, ta, y ellos tratan de conectarla con recursos y servicios para apoyar a sus hijos que tienen la necesidad. Ok, ahora déjame ver si uh, podemos hacer esto aquí. Ok, Miriam. Okay, so now we're going to get into the myths, and we there's so many myths um, that I was just reviewing. I, I think I added two or three myths, um, but I, I would like to invite the parents to please um, engage in a discussion after the presentation and express your concerns or, or the myths that you believe are true or things that have happened that that although we have presented these facts in real life, things don't always happen the way it's written. 
So we would like to hear from you, um, you know, what, what are the things that you have heard from other parents and, and you believe, um, you know, just uh, through discussion uh, with other parents. Um, so the first myth is uh, myth one. The school has the IP ready when I get to the meeting. All I have to do is show up, listen to them, read it, and sign it. Can't they just mail me a copy? So the fact uh, to kind of debunk that myth is parents are the most important part of the IEP team, as we stated earlier in the presentation. Because of all the team members uh, are, I'm sorry, because all, of, all the team members, you are the constant. Over the life of the IEP classrooms, schools, teachers, and support staff may change, but you are constant. Um, parents have the best knowledge of the child's strengths and needs. Your input is critical to developing an IEP that works for your child. The education team might produce a draft IEP to work from the review during the meeting, but the decisions regarding the final IEP are made at and sometimes after the actual meeting. Some states and schools uh, districts only require the parents' involvement in the IEP, uh, in the development of the IEP. No signatures uh, unless it is the initial IEP. So that, you know, that's another uh, myth that we, we have heard of is, is parents say, well, if I don't sign uh, the IEP, uh, it, it won't go through. Uh, really, you're only signing the attendance for those review. Uh, you signed the initial consent in the beginning when, when he had the initial uh, evaluation. So during these annual meetings, you, you are just signing that you're present at, at the IEP meeting. So it's important that you show up because again, you want to discuss your child's strengths. You want to discuss the progress that you've seen, the new challenges that you have seen. Um, and you want that to be included in the IEP because that will help shape what supports he needs to help him, uh, you know, uh, get a better education, you know, and perform better. So your input is very important during the IEP meeting. That's very important, uh, uh, Tesla. And I just want to add one point that um, the only person that can authorize the IEP or any other services and the IEP is the parent. Please understand that uh, other members of the IEP team, the psychologist or or uh, the related search firm, cannot uh, compose and make that IEP uh, an effective uh, working document. That's only the parent. So before you authorize something, have a really clear understanding of what that service, that uh, intervention uh, or placement is about and how it will support your child. Ask questions. Ask many, many questions. There is no limit to the number of questions you can ask. You just have to have a clear understanding of how this plan, this, uh, this resource, this technique, this placement Talk, you're will support you. We can't Hello? hear you. Can you hear me? Hello? I can yeah, hear you hear now. Okay, I'm sorry about that. All right, let me just move on to the next slide. Okay, uh, en esta pantalla aquí, uh, um, mucha, algunas veces se escucha, uh, se escucha de los padres que la escuela, uh, cuando ella, la madre va a la escuela, el, la escuela tiene el IP ya totalmente preparado, está listo uh, cuando llega a la reunión. Todo lo que te, tengo que hacer es presentarme, escuchar cuando la, cuando la persona lea el IP y autorizarlo. Y la pregunta es, ¿no pueden enviarme un IP por correo? El punto clave es que ustedes son participantes activas en la reunión del IP. Uh, es sentan, uh, una persona que le ofrece el IP ya totalmente completado no le está ofreciendo ayuda o una forma corta de ayudar a su hijo. Uh, su participación en la reunión es bien importante. Uh, 
En la reunión, Sophie, usted puede up. compartir el teléfono. Hello. Yes, we hear you now. Okay, thanks. Let me know. Uh, en la reunión de la IP, usted puede hacer preguntas, presentar información, etcétera, etcétera. Uh, algunos, um, sabe, si la cosa es participación, es clave. Vaya a la, a la reunión, participe y haga muchas preguntas. Godfrey, we can't understand you. I'm sorry. No, I hear okay, you now. Go, please go. Okay, go. I'm able to hear that very good. Okay. All right, so myth two. I only get one shot a year at the annual IEP meeting to request any changes. And I don't know if my child is making progress until the IEP meeting. So this is a myth uh, to him. And remember, throughout the presentation, we have been uh, you know, recommending that you keep that open dialogue, that, that open uh, communication with your child's teacher uh, in school. You should not be learning about uh, uh, his progress only uh, during the IEP meeting. So the fact uh, to debunk this myth is IEP meetings are required to be held once a year at minimum. Interim meetings may be requested by the parent, teacher, or special service provider and do not replace the required annual meeting. Very important point. You can request a, a meeting, but it's not going to take a, a, a place of that annual meeting. So, all, you know, remember that. You have the right to review and request revisions to the IEP at any time. The school may not tell you we can't or we don't have to. Uh, revisions to the IEP don't always require from a, a formal IEP meeting, but do require the revision be in writing with an agreement by the entire team. Parents should receive periodic progress reports, usually when report cards are issued. Make sure you are you ask when and how the progress is going to be reported. Okay. Hola, me oyen. Yes. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, sí, mito número dos. Okay, gracias. Uh, solo obtengo una oportunidad al año en la reunión anual del IP para solicitar cualquier cambio. Y no sé si mi hijo está progresando hasta la reunión del IP. Esto es otro problema que el centro de padres encuentra muchísimo uh, que envuelve que, uh, que la persona, la madre, el padre, lo que sea, no tiene conocimiento de cómo funciona es el, el, la reunión de la IP. Um, usted tiene el derecho de participar en la reunión, la inicial, punto. Pero durante el curso del año, también, como le dije anteriormente, puede uh, participar hablando con las maestras, los terapistas de su hijo. Uh, y tiene el derecho, uh, como dice en el segundo punto, tiene el derecho de examinar y solicitar revisiones del IP en cualquier momento del año escolar cuando usted uh, determina que es necesario. Muchas veces la escuela dice, no tenemos el servicio o la persona que lo puede entregar. Lamentablemente, eso no se, eso no es su consideración. El papel de la escuela es proporcionar servicios, uh, recursos, etcétera, para el, el mejoramiento de su hijo o hija. Uh, el tercer punto, las revisiones al IP no siempre requieren una reunión formal del IP, pero sí requieren que la revisión sea por escrito con un acuerdo de todo el equipo. Muy importante, uh, todo funciona a base de estar por escrito. Cuando escucha algo por teléfono o le ofrece un servicio, usted va a seguir, le va a dar seguimiento, por favor, me lo puede 
eh, indicar lo que usted me dijo por escrito. Si no está indicado en un papel, uh, tal vez va a ser uh, más difícil para obtener el, el servicio. Favor de uh, asegurar que todo, todo esté por escrito. Uh, último punto. Padres deben recibir informes periódicos del progreso. Por lo general, cuando se emitan las tarjetas de informe, los report cards, asegúrese de preguntar cuándo y cómo se va a informar el progreso. Um, el IT tiene una sección después de las metas que, que se indica cuándo, a qué cantidad de veces usted puede pedir informes de progreso de su hijo o hija. Muy importante que usted lo haga, saber Lo que sea necesario. Algunas, para muchas familias, eh, anualmente, algunas cuando eh, van a coleccionar las tarjetas del informe del hijo, que son cuatro veces al año, depende de la necesidad. Um, Uh, let me just uh, repeat something that uh, Miriam said, very important, that um, in terms of getting uh, information up to date, you have the right, parents have the right to, uh, to request how often their child's progress will be measured. Right after the, the annual goal section, there's a, there's a little part that indicates how often the IEP team will inform parents about the progress the child is making. So make sure that you ask for reports monthly, uh, quarterly, or whatever, depending on the child's needs are. It's really important. Okay, uh, myth three. If it's on the IEP, then it's going to get done. Uh, another myth. Uh, the fact to be debunked that myth is parents have a requirement to be on the team. You have the right to ask questions. You have a responsibility to your child to ensure he is receiving an appropriate education according to his individual needs. And like uh, Godfrey stated, you know, before they may say, "Oh, we don't have these services," or "We have, you know, we don't have the staff available." But they have to provide you with the resources to get those services. So there is no excuse. You have to make sure that your child is receiving and you should stay on top of those services. You should ask, uh, you know, contact the, the, the service provider and see how your child is doing. Because a lot of times um, at the parent center, we hear a lot of stories that the, the children are not receiving the services or they're not, uh, the school is not uh, following the IEP. How else would you know unless you stay on top of it? So don't, don't give the school too much credit. I mean, you have to be on top of them uh, and you know, at least be vigilant and, and of what's going on and, and aware and have that open communication with uh, uh, those providers and the school. Communication between you and the school is the best way to ensure that the IEP is being implemented appropriately. Problems are resolved quickly and easily, and your child gets the benefit of it all. So it's very important that you stay on top of it. That's very true. Thank you. Okay. Uh, mito número tres. Si está en el IP, entonces uh, va a ser hecho, se va a proporcionar. El hecho es, los padres tienen un requisito para estar en el equipo. No debe ser la opción. Uh, usted debe representar a su hijo, porque otra vez conoce a su hijo mejor que nadie y está, él es, está representando a su hijo. Hija. Usted es el defensor o la defensora de su hijo. ¿okay? Tiene derecho a hacer preguntas. Usted tiene la responsabilidad de que su hijo se asegure de que está recibiendo una educación apropiada de acuerdo con sus necesidades individuales. La palabra clave es su responsabilidades. Eh, muchas veces uh, padres escuchan de qué son sus derechos, pero también como está indicando aquí y como mencionó Miriam, también tenemos responsabilidades en términos de comunicar con la escuela, hacer preguntas y estar presente para su hijo. Uh, segundo párrafo, la comunicación entre usted y la escuela es la mejor manera de asegurarse de que el IP se está implementando adecuadamente. Los problemas se resuelven rápido y fácilmente y su hijo 
obtiene el beneficio de todo si usted mantiene conexión, comunicación con las escuelas, las maestras, uh, las personas que ofrecen los servicios relacionados, etc. Ok. So this Great. concludes facts and myths of a uh, uh, presentation. Um, this is the resource page. We've um, included enrollment help uh, for the New York uh, Department of Education. Uh, for more on remote learning for students with IEP, there's a link for that. Um, frequently asked questions about annual uh, goals. There's an article uh, that you can read on uh, at your own uh, that provides you more information about that individual education program 11 facts to know there's a link that we've added for you to to read uh, the New York Department of Education learn at home of course we included that link and the New York City Department of Education uh, information on remote learning uh, also very important uh, uh, information is the parent guide to special education services. So this pamphlet, this book, booklet actually, uh, provides you with all your rights, right? And also definitions of all these uh, acronyms and, and words that you hear often that you're not really sure what they mean. At the back of this guide gives you, it provides you some definitions so parents should really look into that. This this should be your guide for everything uh, when leading um, towards your child's IEP. So use this uh, guide, it will help you through it. Smart IEPs, there's a link for that that we've included. The standard-based proce uh, process, what you need to know a uh, very important link that parents could go in and read on their own. Visit New York City uh, Schools dot uh, NYC dot gov free meals. Of course, we included a uh, uh, a link for that and five common misconceptions about IEPs, which I I pulled three of them and and included in this presentation. Five IEP myths and and several facts. So there's an, a, a link for that um, article also um, that will provide you with you know, some more information about some other myths that uh, you may have heard or you may believe yourself. Okay, finalmente tenemos aquí una lista de algunos recursos disponibles para ustedes que uh, que se tratan de muchos de los temas que, que se discutieron en este webinar. Uh, otra vez, encontrará información acerca de el proceso de educación especial, um, uh, ayuda de inscripción, tenemos un sitio web para ahí, una conexión. Uh, para obtener más información sobre el aprendizaje remoto, uh, tenemos un enlace aquí que pueden visitar también, uh, número Número 5, el Departamento de Educación de Nueva York um, tiene una, un recurso nuevo para cómo aprender en casa, que está ahí, que tiene el correo electrónico de, la, de este lugar. Informes, número 6, información de, del Departamento de Educación sobre aprendizaje remoto. Como mencioné uh, al principio, durante esta crisis uh, que tenemos aquí, la enseñanza va a continuar, pero de una forma bien diferente a lo que estamos acostumbrados. Ahora todo se re, eh, es acerca del de uso del Internet, tener acceso a, a tabletas, a computadoras, etcétera, etcétera, para poder comunicar con los oficiales y las personas que podrán apoyar a nuestros hijos por la pantalla. So, por favor, hagan todo lo posible para informarse de esta nueva forma de, de proporcionar información, uh, recursos, uh, uh, adiestramiento para nuestros hijos, etc. Um, so aquí tenemos una lista, uh, uh, son muchos los recursos, pero no había más espacio o tiempo para indicar los otros, pero con uh, esto deben de tener una forma buena para uh, explorar estos temas en más detalle. So, les quiero dar las gracias por su participación. Espero que encontraron la serie de webinars 
uh, beneficioso y que podrán also utilizar algunos de los uh, recursos que se mencionaron en la serie. Okay, this is a, um, we'd like to thank you very much for participating, for your patience. Um, the IP is, as you can see, is a very extensive and somewhat complicated process, but it's really important that parents get involved with it intimately. Uh, as we said before, it's not just about using your rights, but it's about also exerting your responsibility in reaching out and working with these people that are that are here, that are trained to support your child to receive a beneficial education. So um, please stay tuned. Visit our website um, so you can learn about uh, upcoming events and other things that uh, we will uh, make available for you. Please stay safe and good luck to everyone. Bye bye. Are there any questions? No, no questions. Oh, okay. All right. Well, thank you everyone for uh, joining us today. I hope we provided you with uh, inf uh, beneficial information. Again, always research it. That's what we do whenever we don't have the answers for the parents. We, we do our own research. So I, I encourage parents to do your research. Thank you all. Okay. Okay, Doris. Say so we're good.